Hi, boys and girls. This is Grandma Sheila, and I have this week's Christmas story for you. And it has a most unusual name. It's called, Please, Sir, I Want to Buy a Miracle. Buy a Miracle? Well, we're not quite ready for that part of the story yet. This story took place years and years and years ago in a huge, big city. And you know, it was Christmas Day. And outside of the tenement building where this family lived, the wind was blowing, the snow was falling, it was bitterly cold. Everybody on the outside knew it was Christmas, and everybody was excited and running up and down the, the streets. And there were lights and Christmas decorations in the store windows. But in the little flat in that tenement building, it was not a Merry Christmas. In the one room that this little family lived in, in the one corner, stood a small cot. And on the cot lay a little boy that was dangerously ill. He had been sick for a long, long time. And every day, he seemed to get worse, in spite of his parents trying to care for him, and in spite of their prayers, and his big sister watching over him. He didn't seem to be getting better. Now, standing by that cot was a doctor, and he took his stethoscope, and he listened to the little boy's lungs. He listened to his heart. He felt his feverish brow. This doctor was very sad. He tried everything to make this little boy well. How do you tell parents that your child may not get well? But without really looking at them, he started to talk, and he said, The only thing that can save him now is a miracle. And he slowly put his stethoscope and things back into his black bag, and he shook his head, and he said, I'm so sorry, and he went out the door. Well, while this was happening, standing in the doorway was his big sister. I call her a big sister because she was older than he was, but she was a little girl. And as she had listened to that doctor, a look of sheer fright had come across her face. She didn't know what to do. The doctor had said they needed a miracle before he'd always ordered medicine and wanted to do treatments and things that they couldn't afford. Perhaps a miracle was another treatment they couldn't afford. She quietly made her way over to her little cot. And there, sitting beside it on a tiny little table, was a one-dollar bill. That had been her sole Christmas present. And she picked up her piggy bank, and she shook it. It had some noise in it. So she unplugged the bottom and shook it sideways, and out fell. Ten, no, eleven pennies. She had a dollar and eleven cents. 
while her parents were bending over her little brother and her mommy was crying softly. She grabbed her coat and she stuffed that dollar and 11 cents into her coat pocket. And she grabbed the one scarf that she had and she wrapped it around her head. And she quietly went out the back door of that tenement building. When she got out to the street, the snow was still falling and the wind was still blowing. And oh, was it cold. But all that little girl could think about was she had to find a miracle. The doctor said that the only thing that would save her little brother was a miracle. She ran as fast as her little feet would carry her down the street to the corner drugstore. She went inside and she knew that the pharmacy where they bought medicine for her little brothers was in the very back of that farm of that pharmacy. It was in those days they called it a drugstore, but the front of the store was full of all kinds of treasures because it was Christmas. But in the back, the pharmacist who made up the bottles of pills that helped make people well was well, when the little girl came rushing back there, the pharmacist, a little white-haired man, was talking to another gentleman. And the little girl looked up at him. He was dressed in a big, fluffy fur coat. And he was a big man. And he and the pharmacists were talking and talking. She knew that you don't interrupt adults when they're talking, but she didn't have a lot of time. She reached in her pocket and she pulled out some of those pennies. And she took the pennies and she started knocking those pennies on the counter. The pharmacist, he looked down at her and she said, excuse me, please, but I, and that big, tall, big man in the fur coat, he stopped talking too. And he looked down at the little girl and she looked up at the pharmacist and at that man. And she pulled out of her pocket that dollar and 11 cents. And she dropped it on the counter. And she said, I need to buy a miracle. And I have money. See, I can pay for it. I need to buy a miracle. The pharmacist looked at her. You need to buy a miracle? And that big, tall man in the fur coat, he bent down really low to her level, and he said, You want to buy a miracle? And she said, Yes. The doctor said, I have to have a miracle or my little brother's going to die. I have to buy one. And see, I have money. That big kind man said, well, you know, miracles are kind of hard to find. But maybe I know of a place where miracles can happen. And she said, oh, good. We need one really fast. And she stuck that money in that man's big hand. And he looked at it very seriously. And he said, a dollar and 11 cents. 
I think that's just the right amount to pay for a miracle. The little girl was so tickled. She couldn't hardly stand still. She said, but we need it right away. And the man said, well, you need to tell me the name of the doctor that came and saw your little brother. Now, the pharmacist had been standing there for weeks and weeks and weeks. Every so often, that family, he knew that family, would come in and they would have to buy more medicine for their little boy. And he wasn't getting any better. Well, that big man, still holding that dollar and 11 cents, stood up to the pharmacist and he, he started talking in great big words that the little girl didn't understand to the pharmacist. And the pharmacist kept answering him back. The little girl had thought, what was the name of the doctor? And she burst out the doctor's name and the man said, he looked at the pharmacist. He said, do you know where she lives, where the little sick boy is? The pharmacist said, yes, I do. And then that big man in the fur coat, kind-faced man, he got down close to her again and he said, I'm going to go find you a miracle now. You go right home and wait for me. Well, the little girl rushed home, but she had a secret. She didn't want to say anything yet. So she went about her business while the mommy and daddy were trying to take care of little brother. <sighs> The little girl thought back about the conversation she'd had with that big man. And she thought, I did tell him that the doctor had said that my brother had an infection in his spine, whatever that is. I told him that, and I heard the pharmacist tell the man where we live. She was thinking all of this, but she thought most about the fact that the man said he was going to get her miracle. What the little girl didn't know was that big man in the fur coat was a doctor, a specialist that worked in a big hospital. And one of the friends, a specialist that he worked with, did nothing but surgeries on spines. And when that man got to the nearest telephone, he called that spinal doctor and talked to him and explained about the little girl that was wanting to buy a miracle for a dollar and 11 cents. Could he please, could he please make this miracle happen for her little brother and he would be able to help? Well, later on that afternoon in the little flat, there was a knock on the door. When the mother rushed to the door, there stood their doctor, and that big man in the fur coat, and another doctor. All three men looked very seriously at the little boy, and they examined him, and they talked about it. And then the specialist, he turned to them and he said, I think that I can give you the miracle you want for your little boy. 
that's what I do, is fix spines. And I am going to take him to the big hospital on the other side of the city. That will be where your miracle will happen. And we will take the best care possible of him. And it's already paid for by your little girl. When they took little brother, those doctors took him to that hospital. And they did do surgery. And the dollar and 11 cents did buy a miracle. Her little brother's life was saved. because she had the faith to believe that that dollar and 11 cents could buy a miracle. And God did the rest. He made the young doctor use the choicest words of, he needs a miracle. And she knew the little girl rushed out and God put that big, kind doctor in the pharmacy, visiting with his old friend, the pharmacist, just when God and the angels knew that little girl was going to be there. And God knew that that big doctor in the fur coat would know a specialist that could fix her little brother. God is the provider of miracles and that little girl and her family and her little brother had a Christmas miracle sent from God. Thank you, boys and girls. I'll see you next week with another Christmas story.